well, 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 what do we have here? Oh, look, it's more Warcry content. Thank you so much, Games Workshop, for sending us through these amazing expansion packs for the upcoming Warcry game, which you might have seen one of our battle reports here on the channel. If not, then don't worry, because this game is going to be here for a long time to stay. And I say that with confidence, mainly because of the fact that even though it is still in its infancy, the support for it already, with other warbands and factions to come and join in the fun, is astounding. And with more on the way soon, it's sure to be a game that's going to be going on for quite a long time. But thanks to Warhammer and their community for sending this in, it means that I can now unbox these four packs for you right now to give you a little sneak peek of all the chaos, death, and destruction that is on its way. Now, let's start off the only way I know how, by with a Jules opening some ghouls, and we'll go and see what's inside the Flesh Eaters pack. Well, that actually took me a lot longer to open than I thought. A grown 31-year-old man struggling to open a pack of cards. Yeah, this is uh, definite flashbacks to when I started collecting magic. But yes, you might think to yourself that they've given you tons of duplicates, and then you think to yourself, this isn't Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't need these amounts of cards. Well, get rid of the ones that you, the languages that you don't speak and hold on to the one that you do. I barely speak English, so we'll hold on to this one. And we'll see that the Flesh Eater Courts can be made up of Crypt Haunters, Crypt Flares, Crypt Infernals, Crypt Horrors, Crypt Ghouls, and Crypt Ghasts. My personal favourite. Look at them, aren't they adorable? So let's zoom in here and see what we've got here. So for a double, you can cast a Feeding Frenzy ability, which is a fighter can only use this ability if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation. Remove a number of damage points from that fighter equal to the value of this ability. This is amazing because being able to regenerate lost health points in this type of game could mean literal victory and defeat on a knife's edge. So that is a great ability that's been carried over from the Flesh Eater Court's Age of Sigmar rule set and made its way into this game. You can also do a skewering strike for a double, which is add one to the strength characteristic of the next attack action made by this fighter, this activation, that has a range characteristic of three or less. In addition, if that attack action scores a critical hit until the end of the battle round, that target fighter cannot make more actions or disengage actions. Now, this can only be used by a character with this ability here. So let's find out who this would be referring to. So we've got it there, there, Okay, so it looks like both of the Crypt Flare and the Crypt Infernal can use this ability, which is pretty fantastic when you think that you've effectively now got a skill that can basically tell a person, uh, a, an enemy unit, that they're ignoring their turn. A great way to tie up enemy generals or heavy hitters that you might actually be a bit more afraid of. So that is a very powerful move for a double, if you get a critical, obviously. On another double here, we've got Chosen of the King. A fighter can use this ability only if they're within six inches of a visible friendly fighter with the leader room mark. Until the end of this fighter's activation, add two to the, to the attack characteristics of attack actions made by this fighter that have a range characteristic of three or less. That is amazing, being able to add two extra attack dice on something that probably already has, on average, they have about four or five attack dice a piece, so that actually could be absolutely outstanding. If you're wondering what all of these markers here are, that actually designates to the ability cards, which we'll go through later, and it means that only these types of uh, classes can use these skills. So don't go expecting, I don't know, a, a little gasp. Everyone's free, favorite little gasp. You know, you love him. You want him to go and do Chosen of the King, for example. But we've got the first trouble here, which is Bringer of Death. Add the value of this ability to the move characteristics of friendly fighters within six inches of this fighter when this fighter uses this ability until the end of the battle round. So that is amazing if positioned correctly. If you pop this off, and you've got a group of people around you, you could do effectively very large turn one charges, getting onto, ability, onto uh, objectives and even tying up enemies in an incredibly quick fashion. A perfect move for the first turn if you want to get all crazy and up on the offensive, which if you're playing flush eater courts, that's pretty much all you know. Another trouble here, we've got Death Scream. Roll one dice for each visible enemy fighter within eight inches of this fighter. On a five, allocate one damage point to the fighter being rolled for. On a six, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability. A range eight, potentially doing, if you've planned this well, and that is a triple six, potentially doing six damage right there. That's very good. There's not too much ranged going on at the moment, apart from the first Fang's harpoon and a few other things that get maybe three inches or more, but eight inches is a very, very powerful ability indeed. And finally, we move on to the quad. Oh dear. 
the Royal Hunt. This fighter makes a bonus move action. Then they can make a bonus attack action. In addition, add one to the attack's characteristics of that attack action if this fighter is within one inch of a visible friendly fighter. Being able to make a bonus move and a bonus attack with an extra one attack dice is insane if you've got something that will pop off with big damage hits. But what will do the most damage? Well, let's take a look at the ability cards that we've got in this pack. And we'll start off here with the two that I showed you earlier, the Crypt Flare and the Crypt Infernal. Now, this right here is the Crypt Infernal, and that has a 300 point cost. Now, that is a very, very hefty cost point for a game that only has a thousand points as a maximum warband size, but still, it might be worth it for the fact that he has 40, yes, that's right, 40 health, a toughness of four, but a movement of 10. That's insane. And his claws only have one range, but they roll five attack dice, four strength, doing two to five damage a hit. A tank that does five damage a hit, potentially, on five dice? Sign me up. Right, then moving over to the Crypt Flayer. He has slightly less impressive stats, but when I say that, I mean that it's down from 40 to 30. He costs 235 points and has a one range, four dice, four strength, and potentially four damage output there. Again, another 10 inch move. That's insanely good as well. And they both, though both of those characters had the fly ability, I'm pretty sure as well. Now going up here, we've got the Crypt Haunter, who has 40 health, again, 255 points. So potentially if you wanted to bring in these three here, you've used up nearly a lot of your points value as is. But this rolls five dice, strength four, two to five damage a hit right there. Again, this could be perfect for popping off those extra damage hits and getting those crits on that. And we've got a uh, Crypt Horror right here. It's the slightly weaker version here. I'm starting to see the pattern of having a winged uh, monster and then a slightly weaker one. And now we have the ground monster and a slightly weaker one at 190 points. Doing 30, 30 health though, four, de um, four defense, only six, six um, movement, which is a bit slower. But then again, would you rather pay 235 points for an extra four points of movement? That's up to you, I guess. Uh, for uh, one range, four attack dice, four strength, doing two to four damage a hit. That's pretty impressive. And then we get to everyone's two favorite cards here. 125 points will get you a Crypt Ghast. And uh, you know, he's my personal favorite just because he's got like a skeleton poking out of his back. I mean, who doesn't love that? A ghouls, a jewels loving a ghouls. Who could not love that? He only has three defense though. I mean, uh, fair, fair enough. He's, he's pretty weak. He's, he's carrying a bone, whatever. He's got 16 health, 125 points, uh, one range, four damage dice, and three strength, doing two to four damage a hit. He's kind of more of your, your, your daily grunt for that one there. And then finally, we've got the ghoul, bless you, only eight health, doing five movement speed, 55 points, three attack dice, three damage, doing one to three on a hit. These are your objectives, uh, capturers, really, uh, or maybe, at a push, there'll be somebody who uh, you can maybe fling into battle if you get a fair few of them. Because at the end of the day, you could, in theory, take an absolute ton of these. Because again, they're only 55 points and there's no model uh, cap on these guys. So there we go, the minion abilities, and that is the Flesh Eater Quartz. Let me know down below if you're thinking about picking up these nasty fellows and horrors and ghouls and just awful, awful things, uh, and using them in Warcry. And if you are, what are your tactics going to be? Drop them down in the comments section below, and remember to stay tuned for more Warcry here on Live and Let's Dice. I've been Jules, you can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And as always, you've been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!